Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the JF17 and we're looking at the absolute culmination of DCS from 20 years or wherever it started until now in this weapon. It's the biggest, the most complex weapon that's ever been in DCS. It's the CM802 AKG. It is a jet-powered cruise missile suitable for attacking sea or land targets. It has a range of around 100 nautical miles. It can get to its rough target area with various different modes and routes. And at the point it gets to the target, it then switches over to manual control, a bit like an AGM-62 walleye. It's got essentially a TV sensor in the front. We control it from a data link pod that we've got back on the mothership 100 miles away. And we'll drive it into whatever we want. A ship, a building, a tank, whatever. The reason it has this sensor instead of its own radar is that its sister the C802 AK can hit a ship, but it can't choose which ship it hits. So it'll hit this flotilla, but it won't be able to pick out the mothership, that one there. With this sensor on board, with the data link, we can get my missile to target, and that may mean sending it through canyons or along a weird route to avoid defences and S-turns and stuff like that. We can program all that stuff in. And then at the end, we take over on the terminal phase, drive it in like a walleye, and hit the mothership that we want. There are three main modes that we can use it in. Direct, coordinate and manual. Direct mode for target designation will use one single mark point in data slot 40, 40. Coordinate uses one times pre-plan point. Bear in mind that pre-plan points are data slots 35 to 39. You can only use one of them. Manual mode is different. Manual mode, you can actually send it on a whole route of points. These are route points. We can have up to five of them. They are data slot numbers 30, to 34. Now if that wasn't complicated enough, now we've got to look at those mark, those pre-plan points and those route points and discuss how they can be generated. Because this aircraft is so complex that it's prudent to know how you can generate these different points. Now to generate the mark point in data slot 40 for the direct mode is what seems to be a special case for this missile. In this case, data slot 40 is dynamically linked to speed. So all we have to do to generate a target for direct mode is generate a speed and we can generate a speed any way that we normally can in this aircraft we can do it through the air to sea or air to ground radar that is probably preferable we can do it from our t-pod we can do it from our hud we can do it from a waypoint and we can do it essentially from any other type of point the pre-planned is more flexible we can get direct from mission editor we can get direct from f10 map as well as that we can use copy and paste from any other data slot in our aircraft essentially we can get pre-planned point from any method Route points, again, very accessible. We can place them directly in Mission Editor or in F10, or we can copy and paste from any other data slot while in the aircraft. I'm not going to show every way of doing this because there would literally be hundreds of different ways of generating these points. As we're in a Mission Editor here, why don't we populate at least some of them and probably the easiest ones, why don't we do the route points? So we're going to click on our guy here. We're going to click on this here. Navigation, target point, add. I'm going to add a point there and there and there and there i could do a wiggly little route a zigzag route i could go around in circles i could do whatever i want with them and it'll follow this point so i'm going to put those four in i've got to name them now uh, i've got to go back and name them so cycle back to one they must be spelt exactly like this if you're putting them in as direct route points rp1 rp2 rp3 rp4 Whoops, four. So those are RP one to four, and these are coming directly in from the mission editor. I'm gonna save that. We're gonna get in the cockpit now, and we're going to put the pre-planned point in from the F10 map, just to show you we can do it like that. We're in a plane now, let's press F10. Here's the target. So for this, we do not have route points, we just have a single point at the target. We're gonna put this in. We can have any pre-planned point we want. I'm gonna put mark there and mark label. I'm going to put roughly around here. I'm going to call it pre-plan 2. In case you can't see that, that's capital P, capital P2. Arm up our weapons. We must have CM802 AKG. We can carry two of them, the big, heavy, draggy weapons. And we must have our data link pod, which we need to tune to the missiles. Data link pod. Fully armed up. We've got to insert this information into our navigation and our weapons information into our central computer in goes the slot you all know how to do this by now sms all enter go 
So all I want to prove to you before we go any further is that in our destination, if we go and look in our data slots, we can find that uh, pre-planned 2 should be in there as, I think it's going to be data slot 36, but we'll see. Let's try these uh, 37, my bad. That is pre-planned two that we just brought in from the F-10. Next, we'll take off, find the target, and look at yet more ways of doing this. First of all, air-to-ground mode. Now, we can see that our weapon is here. Now, we do not need to align these. All we need to do is power them on. I've never understood the reason for that, but there must be a reason. And you can see after just a few seconds, uh, about 10 seconds, they will be ready for use. So, standard, we're in direct mode here, and I will come back to that. So, next, we're going to go to coordinate mode. And you can see that that's populated now with our PP2 data slot position 37 that we got from our F10 map. We can change that if we wish. In fact, we can't because that's the only pre-plan point we've got in there. Next, manual. And you can see it's automatically populated itself with route points 1, 2, 3 and 4, which are in data slot positions 30, 31, 32, 33. Again, that came from the mission editor this time. It could have come from the F10 map or other sources if we wanted. And then back to direct. Direct is mark point 40 and what it's really trying to tell us is it's going to slave to wherever our SPI is. So our SPI as standard is going to be whatever the selected waypoint is, which is waypoint 1. And it just so happens I put waypoint 1 in the middle of that flotilla, which is a bit coincidental. But let's just pretend between friends that we didn't and we had to do it a different way. Well, I don't have a teapot on board, so I can't use a teapot. I can't, I'm pretending I can't see the ship, so I can't use the HUD. So what I'm going to do is use my radar to go and designate a SPI for this Mark Point 40. So let's get it set up, make sure it's soy, which it is. Set my azimuth, set my range, let's get things scanning. Let's get it in C mode 1, already is. That there is going to be the island in front of us. That there is going to obviously be the flotilla. Let's move this cursor into the flotilla, just in front of them. So that's where we're going to put our point there. And when we press target lock, you can see, in fact, just to prove it, what I'll do is go to there. Uh, I've got mark 40, mark 40 there set. And I will press the target lock button on the radar and you'll see it will repopulate mark point 40. Boom, there. And you can see our speed in the cursor is now down there at the bottom. So we've changed mark point 40 via the speed back to our SMS so that's everything set direct is set with our speed pre-plan 2 route points 1 to 4 all set next quantity how many missiles do you want to fire on the current setup one or both I'm gonna send one targets we've covered cruise do you want it to fly at 50 meters ASL 1500 meters ASL 3500 meters ASL the terminal phase, do you want it to pop up or skim? Well, that doesn't really matter because we're actually going to be controlling it in the terminal phase anyway. So, so it's time to fire our first weapon. We're going to fire in direct mode, first of all. So it's going to travel the settings that we set it until it reaches 20 kilometers from the Mark Point 40, the speed, and then it's going to communicate from me, in which time I better really quickly get my data link pod set up. So data link pod there. That's annoying. We're just going to get rid of that. So we've got information about our missile from the data link pod because it's hooked up. And I should say there is a limit here. There is a 120 degree fan, azimuth fan, in fact, probably omnidirectional fan of contact behind the missile. So if the missile turned around more than 120 degrees or whatever, we could no longer talk to it with our pod. Basically, it has to be facing away from us at all times. So just remember that, otherwise you'll lose radio contact. What we can see is that it is at those coordinates there. It is has a flight time of 40 seconds and counting. We're on channel one. We can have two missiles traveling at once, but it gets a bit hectic. It's that many nautical miles from its uh, targets, in this case, mark point 40 or speed. At 20 kilometers, which is about 12 miles, we will begin to take over. Oh, we can see there, we've now got TKJ there. That means we take over control of this thing in 19 seconds. We will gain video signal. This is just saying we've got data link pod on and course is not relevant here. Make sure we've got this as soy, which we've done. We're going to use our TDC cursors to steer the missile. It's a good idea to lock yourself in position here and prepare for action. So, you saw it got 11 nautical miles from the target point, at which point it's given control over to me, manual control with my TDC. Now, this is a very difficult thing to steer. I am now in control of the missile. I'm going to go right a bit, left a bit, up a bit, down a bit, left a bit. I'm seeking out the mothership. And if this looks hard, it's because it is. 
it's not the easiest thing to do and you can easily get in trouble like that stop doing that I've got it into a bit of a tank slab but I think we might still get a hit okay I've got it going for the mothership I think that's the best I'm going to treat that's going I think I can uh, go in F6 and watch it now And we've lost signal. So, now we're on to missile 2, and let's do it completely differently. Let's skip over coordinate, which basically works the same. It's just using a different point of reference. And let's go to manual mode. This one's going to cruise medium in that fly path there, which is those turn points there, which is designated by those route points. Let's fire that. Warning, 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 warning. It's turning on to route point 1, turn point 1. We can keep track of it here. We've got it snorting easing there, but it's bearing there. We've got its waypoint there. Now, it's currently, I'm going to stop there. What it's saying is that it's on its way to waypoint one of four. Uh, sorry, not waypoint, root point, or correctly, uh, term, term point it actually would be. It's one nautical mile away from that. If I wanted to skip some of those root points, turn points, I could actually press up and down. I'm not going to do it now because I fear I might uh, do something wrong and break the missile, but that I can skip points if I wanted to do that. I've got my time in flight here, no video signal yet until we're 20 kilometers away from uh, route point, or turn point four. Again, we're on channel one. We're now on turn point or route point two, three nautical miles to go. We're now on towards turn point three, two nautical miles to go. Okay, we've got our TJK, so we're about to take control, lock the screen, one, and video link uh what the hell where's the ships aha hello right chill chill oh, i might have got it there ah uh, it's really horrible to drive i think i've got it i've got it again we've taken control of terminal phase if we want we can make it perform a pop-up or do whatever we want manually Boom! There you go. To summarise, we've shown how to set up a direct mode, how to set up a coordinate mode, and how to set up a manual mode. We've explained various ways of putting in the route points for the manual mode and showed one method. We've explained the various ways of putting in the pre pam nodes for the coordinate mode and shown one method, the F10. And we've shown using the direct mode via data slot 40, mark point 1, designated via a speed via the radar. That's all I think I need to show. I hope that was useful and see you later.